Hello, how you doing? I thought I'd come on here and do a debt confession and a few other things and talk about other things that so that I don't forget information that you may need and or you may not have heard or even thought about. But I decided, I said, well, let me back up and show everybody where I'm at. I'm really happy where I'm at, you know, because I'm better than I was in November 2022. You know, people may think that's a long time ago. It's not that far. The year has flown, okay? The year is flying now. And we put ourselves in that time frame. You can't put yourselves in the time frame. You know, they do that with age and everything else. As long as your mind is working, as long as you can fix your budget, as long as you can plan and do what you got to do, everything's all right. You can just move on. And we need to get out of that mindset of it's got to be this way also. You know, I got to do it that person's way. You know, people, they got those how-to things and it's okay. But, you know, you need to fit those into your life, too. You know, if somebody gives you a recipe, that recipe, you may be able to t tweak it a little bit and throw a little extra spices into there, and, and it becomes your recipe. You know, my rum cake, I tweaked it, and it's mine. You know, it's not anybody's recipe. When everybody talks to me, they said, oh, we want a piece of your rum cake. Or my banana pudding. We want your banana pudding. You know, it tastes different than that banana pudding. <laughs> so it's what you do with it. Whatever you do with your budget, whatever you do with your life, learn to tweak things and make your life exciting. That's what makes things exciting because you decided to tweak things and change things around instead of the same old ordinary thing. You know, if you cash stuff, do something different. Do something else. It's okay. Fix it. See if you can fix it. See if you can tweak it. You know, do what you got to do with your life. And that would make your life happier. Spice things up. You know, we spice our life up and spice with our spouses and partners. Oh, I got to spice it up here. I got to do this and that. But you don't spice ordinary things up. Spice ordinary things up. You know, surprise your kids. Do different things. Learn different things. You know, maybe you want to take your daughter somewhere to, you know, both of you go on a trip somewhere together, and you never did that before. Or both of you take some classes together. You can audit classes. You don't have to go. You have to pay for them, but you don't have to get grades with them. And you can audit, and you could be sitting in class with your child. So spice things up in your life. Don't just sit there. And some of you sitting in them, in them rocking chairs. You know, I got rocking chairs out on the porch. But you sit forever, <laughs> okay? We don't need to sit forever. We need to be doing something. Learn a new hobby. You know, go do something. They got, like here, they have a art um, building, huge art building, where you can learn different things for a very small price. You know, like $2, you can get free supplies, and you can learn. If you want to do crochet, you do crochet. If you want to do jewelry, you do jewelry. If you want to do, you know, our rec center is free here uh, for residents only. The others have to pay a fee, but, you know, we've got people, they, they're learning to swim. They're learning, they're playing basketball together. They got different uh, young kids playing basketball all the way up to seniors playing basketball, girls only, boys only type thing. Um, you know, we got a swim team. We got an older swim team. We got a senior swim team. So, you know, find something else to do. And if not, make it, you know, you know, go to the city council and say, you know, how come we don't have this? Can we have something like this? Do something. You know, don't just sit there and gripe and go on and you're not moving, okay? Do something. Think about it. Think about something special with your kids or your spouse. So we're going to do the debt confession. And what did I want to tell you? Oh, the um, credit bureau. I'll say that now. The credit bureau, you know, it's always for profit. It's not for your friend. Remember, I tell you that all the time. It's not your friend. Um... I quit signing up for the lock 
and all that stuff where you got to pay like $29 or $19 or something because I found out you're selling my information anyway. That's where it's coming from. They sell your information to anybody practically, okay? Anybody that pays their little fee and some things they sell is more than others. You know, like when they put on there all your different addresses on there. They don't need to have all that. You know, I have, I get at them, I'm like get it off. They got names on there, I told you, uh, with my parents' names under my credit report, like also known as, AKA. No, we're not also known as. Those people have their own social security number. If they passed away, they've had their own life. I am not responsible. I did not have their credit. I was not in it. I don't have their credit cards, and their name needs to be off of there. You know, they know who all lives in your house. They know what age. It's just on and on and on. They know what color you are, what race you are, everything. And they sell that information to credit card people, to whoever is able to take it. Okay? Credit bureaus, collections, everybody's got it. So I'm sitting there going, why do I want you? You're worse than the scammers. <laughs> <laughs> That's why everybody's calling you because, you know, you wonder why they get your email. Your email's on there. They got your email. You're getting all this stuff from emails. You know, we didn't sign up for this. They got your phone number on there. They, anybody can see your phone number. Your phone number, you may have paid for it to be private, okay? My phone number is private. I'm with Verizon. It's private. You can't even call me. You have to tell me, you have to text me and say, I'm going to call you <laughs> or you call me. Usually it's you call me back because I have to put you under favorite for you even to call me. It blocks every scammer on there and my phone does not ring except I know it's the kids, you know, my mom, dad, my grandparents. That's, that's all that's getting through certain, certain relatives because some, some are people are relatives and some are family. So family members, not those relatives are on my phone. So I know they're going to get through, but everybody else is not going to get through. You just can't call me. I tell them at the doctor's office, you just can't call me. You have to text me. Now I'll see it then, but that's it. But the credit bureau sells everything that you have that's been out there that you put out there okay if you signed up a couple of them are doing like um we'll check your subscriptions and get rid of them or you were with a company or something but they're hooked to the credit bureau you're giving them information we have to stop giving people our information quit signing up for stuff especially stuff you're not going to use because if you keep reading it goes there's a third party affiliate see that company is making money off of you because they sell into the third party affiliate and then all of a sudden it's all on your email oh you signed up for this no we didn't sign up for this okay we did not sign up for this. And then it gets all over the world. You're wondering how all this stuff gets on your... How did this get on the email? You know, and, and kids are getting it now. They're getting in the same thing because they're just feeding off. They know who's in the house. And so the credit bureaus also, when they're selling their information, they get their information from other companies and the where you live, Right. So your zip code is very important where you live. Now, if you are in a zip code and you have an 850 credit score, now think you got a very high credit score, and you go apply for a credit card, and they give you a credit card for of $10,000. You want it more, but that was the limit for you. Okay, 10000 You got perfect credit, blah, blah, blah. But Joe, who lives over in another zip code, has an 850 credit score. But he gets the same credit card with a limit of 25000 Now, why should these two credit scores be different? They're going by your zip code. They average, the, they go through who is the lowest person baddest credit score in your neighborhood all the way up to the highest and they average that and the credit score may come out to be for your whole neighborhood 
50, what, five to 500? So they're not going to give you that high credit card because what? You live in that zip code. But Joe over here lives in another zip code, so he gets more than you get. And there's somebody else that's got an 850 credit score, and they're in a wealthy neighborhood, and you know they're going to get it. Now, see, that's how they keep, they try to keep us in our place. And people are wondering about, and they probably been, they've been doing it for years. We just don't, no, didn't know. Okay, but that causes, you're talking about white flight, brown flight. There is brown flight. Okay, brown people will pick up and go. They're just as bad sometimes as if somebody's in the neighborhood, blah, 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 let's go, or the neighborhood is running down, it's time to go. Okay, so um doesn't make any difference. It can be any kind of flight, but I'm just calling it brown flight. So even if somebody moves into your neighborhood, they don't care who moves into your neighborhood. They could have a zero credit score. They're in your neighborhood. They're going to count that zero, okay? And they're going to put you and lump you in with all those people, and it, that's all you get. You're not getting any more. Nope, nope. And it shouldn't be like that. That's like discrimination, it really is. It's a basic form of discrimination. Like, you you stay there, okay? We're just punishing that whole neighborhood. Oh, you're over in that neighborhood? Nope. But that's things that they do. So watch what you do with that credit bureau. Watch what you do with that information. Keep that information under lock and key. Don't sign up for things, you know, like purse places and all this other places and some places are bad you know i know one that y'all are at all the time and they've already said they if they go under all of our information is gone and i'm not gonna say our i started it at first and i went oh i'm not doing that the alarm sounded from the government and people are still doing it they're still with that company and showing their little things. and But, see, your information is still all on there. And if it blows, it's out there. So watch what you're doing. And check your, always check before you say, I accept it. They won't let you read, I accept. Don't, 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 you should be able to read that policy before you accept anything. They don't want you to read it. They'll go, Push the button, push the button. They won't go to the private policy. Even though it's up there, you're pushing private policy. You can't see it. And then if you keep reading, all of a sudden you'll see third mar marketing, third party marketing. That means they're selling it to somebody. And also check some of your internet accounts, okay, on there. Re start rejecting some of that stuff that, you know, we... Um, third party marketing, oh, the same thing, same thing. When you sign up for something on the internet, third party, the internet search engine, third party, whichever one you may be using, check your settings so that it doesn't happen. Try to stop tracking. They don't need to track you from where you go all the time. They want to see where you at. Where you at? What you doing? That tracking. Oh, they're at this store over here. Oh, they're at this store. And you can, and it's trouble. You can hardly get that thing off of there. They don't even want, want you to get it off. In some places, if they're emailing you, you have to be careful because some of those are scammers. But I had went to a regular place and they go blank. You can't even find the store all of a sudden when you say unsubscribe. <laughs> but you have to be careful with that because, like I said, there's scammers on there. So we don't want to go doing that either. So don't do that. Just delete anything. And I know it's a pain. It's a pain for me. I delete all the time. But I'm going to sign up with a company because I was with the company before and everything was a lot better. I had like one out of the way email once a month so i'm saying i'm going back to that company so we we're going to do a debt confession it's just a small one because i only have so much anymore now when i started 
It was something, and last year I was paying off my grandparents' stuff. They had got into it with a, I call it a loan scammer. That's all it was. It was a big scam, and he's talking them into things. And uh, they had went to a meeting, and, you know, and it just got, it was ugly. It was ugly, and when I found out about it, you know, because I reported them also, so, uh, to the federal government, because it was a scam on senior citizens. And then they got all caught up in it, and they were trying to use their credit cards to get out of it, and it wasn't working. So I just offered to pay for it. and so, But that was added on top of my debt, which was fine. I was happy. I was like, okay, I can do it. You did more to, for me than I probably will ever get to do for you. I'm doing my best, but you know. So here we go. Are you ready? Yes. So the first thing is my house. And my house... Um, I'm always going to auctions to get things, and that's because my dad. My dad, <laughs> he's an auction engineer. He loves going to auctions. So, um, and my uncle. Can't leave him out. I think he started it. And um, my dad's brother. So, um, we went to the house auction that they have, and um, this house was there. And we went around, you see it ahead of time, we came around the neighborhood, we're looking at it, and you are against up against people. You got up against and probably more now, so people that are wanting it to rent out, they want it to, you know, sell it again. You're coming up against these other people now, so it's probably a little harder to do. But uh, we had went to the loan company, put in a range of how much, house I could get for the loan. It's nice to be pre-approved so you know what type of house you're looking for instead of going, hey, I can't get that and feel disappointed because they won't give you any more of a loan. So um, we went and the house was worth 350000 at the time. and um, But they wanted to get rid of it. The city had it. They had snatched it and so it was a hundred and seventy thousand five twenty five. So that's what my loan was, and uh, didn't pay down nothing. That was that's that was the price. That was it. I didn't put any money on it. And so now the balance is one forty. Zero six eight ninety one, one hundred forty thousand sixty eight dollars and ninety one cents. Now I put principal money on it. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But I changed. You can change your budget, people, anytime. And I changed my mind. I said, let me get rid of that car because the car was just getting on my nerves. <laughs> it, they weren't bothering me. It was just. Things get on my nerves, and I look at them like, you need to go. <laughs> okay, get out of here. So the house payment is 1300 a month. I usually pay more like, you know, 1681 or some weird number, 1684, that type of thing. The house is only $668 a month. The homeowner's insurance and the property taxes raise this up to this amount monthly. Now, long time ago, and some people still do, some places still do, mostly rural areas do, or people that bought their houses, I guess, a while ago, they um, they still, they pay their property tax separate and their home insurance separate and their house payments separately. And so some pay it all year. And, you know, property taxes here, you pay it twice a year, every, let's see, to January or June, and finish it up in June. And um, and you have to be careful with them with that because if you don't pay it by June, they could file on you in 60 days and foreclose on the house and take it. So you have to be careful places. And I don't know, different states do different things. So that's that right there. That's the house. And then my car. My car was in a, it wasn't repossessed. It was impounded by the police force from the guy had just bought it, took it home, and uh, something happened, um, and it involved the car, 
and they impounded it. The um, car dealer didn't want it back. <laughs> they just filed, I guess they filed for insurance or something with it. You know, it wasn't damaged. It wasn't nothing wrong with it. And it was worth 86000 And they had it up for 36000 because at first I was looking at it and I said, oh, they're not going to, you know, I'm thinking not 36000 especially for a car. I was thinking, I don't think I, yeah. And then I started thinking, yeah, I did pay more than that for, for a car. But I was sitting there thinking like, and my mom said, well, all they can do, you know, I didn't think I would be able to get it. You know, we've had some issues with my husband who passed away and, you know, him causing us to file for bankruptcy, and I was just sitting there going, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I really didn't want my parents to help me. They have did a lot for me through life, and I mean, I was just like, they don't need any more. I never, ever wanted them to hurt or have any type of strife or something, and I always wanted to work things out and do things with whatever I had to do. And uh, because they were upset when we filed for bankruptcy, well, we would have got you out there because my mom said never file. But she said, you know, nowadays, she said some of these rich people file for bankruptcy and they bounce right back. She said, just go bounce right on in there. You're fine. <laughs> you know, she said, you taught me more than I taught you sometimes. She said, I've learned, you know. And uh, so now, um. November 2022, you know, I did my debt confession. I owed over, it was really over that amount. It, it was 199000 something. But really, when you start tweaking and finding everything else, it was way over. Plus, I had my grandparents stuff and um, everything. The car was behind on its payment. I mean, it was just ridiculous. I was losing it, you know. And, um, but now... From 2022, November, it is, drumroll please, <laughs> $9,507.22. Can you believe it? From being up here groveling <laughs> to down there, and I was like, oh, yeah. And see, that's why I want you to keep track of things so that the end of the year, you can see what you, did you really do. And if you didn't get to do what you wanted to do or you messed up, you know how to fix it. You go, okay, I messed that up. Okay, we were eating out quite a bit right there. Okay, we need to stop that. And we had to learn not to eat out. You know, COVID, we, we were just you, trained from COVID to eat out. So we just ate out. <laughs> we ate out. We Ubered. We did this COVID we were in. So we were Ubering. We were doing this. And then that's when my husband's car that he had left, it died. You know, it just ploop, you know, and we were stuck. <laughs> okay, in the house. So it was like, okay, Uber, da da da, Grubhub, whatever, you know, DoorDash, anybody. Then so they, you know, they trained us. Let's eat out all the time. <laughs> we had groceries coming in, but we ate out most of the time. <laughs> and I, and one day I looked on what spurred me to this. I'd been looking at cash stuffing videos. My first one was Deborah's Journey, and um, I looked at it, and but. I can then finally I went, that's it. Because I looked at my bank statement one time. I had five pages and two bills paid on and the rest was eating out, eating fast food, eating this. It was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. The money we spent. And you can imagine you've got so much money coming in at the time, which I usually use as the product, you know, when I'm uh doing my budgeting, I stay on that same um, income level. And the other income I put in high yield savings and it's auto drafted in the stocks and stuff. But, um, because now we are generating way more income than we were, but I keep my income at that 5,000 level, regardless when I'm budgeting. I'm like, I'm not going over. I'm not living beyond my means. I'm going to pretend that other money is not there because I want to save it. I want to have something. I want my kids to have something, my family to have something if I'm not here. I just want to look at it in a bank account. <laughs> 
Okay. It's a joy to look at something that you never had finally sitting still in the bank account, not going in there. Hey, come on, come on, come on. You know, unless you need it, you know, and you're learning that needs way override the wants. There's not many wants I want. Now, I did mess up a no spend day because it was because of income babes. Okay. She had some stuff over there, new stuff on her Etsy that she was showing on her channel and I went over and got it. But it, I'm counting that as a want because <laughs> I, I felt the want. Okay, and so I'm not counting it as a giveaway or subscriber. Yes, I was helping her, but I'm just counting that as a want. That's, that was one of my February wants. You know, I told you one day in February I was buying stuff. So I just went on <laughs> went on over there and said, hey, you know, my kids have been buying stuff for me, but that one I pushed the button on. So Income, babe, see what you did, girl, but that's all right. See, I don't care. If, if I mess up a no spend, I just messed it up, you know. And plus, I pay $5 every day to my no spend binder. Where's it at? That um, the kids got me. So this I had. This was the um, Two Sister Bees no spend adventure. And then the kids got me this. So I put $5 for every... Um, day that I do the no spin, and then it'll be ten dollars. So I hadn't finished that up. We're way over that, but I do have to mark that day. And and this day I knew it was the twenty ninth, and I was gonna spend on that day, but I already used that one up. So I actually got two days that I had a party, but it was a fun party. She had some nice stuff, and a lot of you got some nice stuff. I was over looking at some other stuff too. For my spend day, because you can't, you know, the no spend is just to keep you on track. It's a habit, you know, to keep you earning more money. And you actually will earn more money because you're not spending, but it's not a jail, okay? You tweak it the way you want to tweak it. It's not to make fun of people if they get off of it, you know, whatever, ha ha, he, you know, it's not your budget. It's not your problem. <laughs> okay, you don't need to worry about everybody else's business. So I said, if people, more people will stay out of other people's business. Mind your own business, stay in your own lane. And if you have to, just move on four, four spaces, four more lanes, and just stay over there. If people would leave people alone, we'd be all right. But they don't, and they start. But no spend, tweak it, tweak it. You can still do a no spend. You can do a no spend day. I'm not spending anything today. Maybe you had a rough week where money was just flying out the door. I've had those days and money flies out the door and you just say, I'm not spending anything for a day, three days. Just pick some days and just, you know, do a couple of days, do it once a month, you know, something one day, one day a month. We're not spending anything. You know, it's just like getting pizza. Friday is pizza night. We're not buying <laughs> fast food. You know, tweak this thing, okay? And give it a try, but do it on your own terms. Don't You don't have to be that strict with it. When I started, they were just raving over, no, you can't do this and you can't do that. No. I was like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? But anyway, this one is... $611.74, and it does not move. It only, if I add more money to it, and I have at times, but I feel, but I also learned how to move that interest rate thing around by paying it super early, and then they wind up paying $500 toward my principal instead of me. Okay, and then I can just add on to it, but I'm trying to wait, you know, eventually you're going to have a payoff amount, which they always have a payoff amount every month. I do like that company that you can look at and see where is the payoff amount and what's going on. So, um, got that down. So we are okay. So I have a hundred dollars. I've been working on this, you know, so I have a hundred. So we're going to do this one right here. Okay, I finished 380 and 200. That's 580. Let me get my things out. Come on. No, I will not. I will not come out. Yes, you will come out. 
Okay. Give me that 20. You're trying to sneak back in there. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five. So I got a hundred. Yay! And this one, this money, unless I pay a bill or something or pay early, it's almost time for my uh, medical thing of 800 So I'll decide where I'm going to allocate this money. But, you know, you allocate your money wherever you need to allocate it to. If you need to pay a bill, pay that bill. You know, our goal on here is to pay off debt and then save money. And that's what we're doing. And it's your, you know, it's yours. You're, nobody else is paying your bill. So, you know, nobody really has a say into what's going on with your life. So, you know, you do you. And we can't compare ourselves to everybody. We don't know what's going on with people. And um, they may have the funds. They may have got an extra money you may be a single parent they got you know both people are in the household they got more money you may be a stay-at-home mom or dad you may have lost your job you know there's so many scenarios that's going on they may be getting workman's comp you know that sometimes pays very high depends on what job they were at and um And, you know, they have more money. And, and sometimes you look at people and you're wondering, how come I don't have that? Or they got a big um, tax return because they got more kids or they got more different circumstances than you got. And here you may owe taxes <laughs> money <laughs> like I do. So, well, I did. I paid it off. But either way. So that's done. And I think that is it today. Didn't mean to go so long, but I don't know. You know, if you listen, you listen. If you don't, you don't. That's what I say. I just move on. But anyway, follow some people. Budget with Fatima. I'm really pumping her up. Uh, hopping the budget with Bunny. He hasn't got to the 1K. Uh, other people, if you're headed for that 1K, write it down on the bottom. I need to get to the 1K, you know, quickly, better than what's going on. So some people haven't subscribed to you. And I haven't checked. I always watch the person's name and the number next to them, and you can see approximately how many subscribers they have because they go up and down. And sometimes on YouTube Studio, they may have more or less, they can tell. But, um, you know, help them out. Ask them, do you need me to look at, you know, try to look at the whole video or listen to the whole video. Try to look at uh, people. I know you don't want to look at them, the ads, you know, but ads pay. So look at the ads for people, you know, do your part. I try to look. That's why it takes me so long to get around to people. And if I haven't been around, you know, shoot me a hi, you know, and I will come around. <laughs> so take care. Love you all, you know. Enjoy, enjoy. Um, when you're looking at this, I'm at the homeless lock-in. Weekend lock-in, you know, which is nice because the weather dropped here. We had just a little snow, and it dropped down to 16. So it was really, and it was this funny cold, this funny sharp. It was like had needles in it cold. So I was glad that they were inside. Everybody was inside at the church and, um, you know, warm and having fun. And not looking the, for a place. And they may still, we were talking, they may still, the church said they may still keep them in there till this weather temperature goes up. They can't keep them. You know, some of them will walk away. No, I don't stay. Blah, blah, blah. So you can't force people to do what they don't want to do. So that's territory we're in at times. So anyway, take care. Love you all. Enjoy yourself. Bye-bye. God bless.